What is going on everybody? Welcome back, NTG here with another episode. If you're new to the channel, hi there. So today I have the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra and I wanna share my thoughts and experiences about this device one week later. Now, this is by no means a review. Let's just put it out there. This is not a review, it's just my thoughts and what I've experienced the past week of using this device as my main daily driver. But before I do begin, I just wanna talk about the wallpapers that I use on my phones. It's an app called Backdrops, and it's available on both iOS and Android. So if you wanna find these types of wallpapers I use in my on my phones, then check them out. It's called Backdrops. I'll leave links in the description down below, but without further delay, let's dive right in. Okay, so I, I wanna start off with design and talk about this boxy design. This is, yes, it's a it resembles the note, but it's not a note. Let's just put that, you know, let's just remember that while watching this video. It's not a note, but it resembles a note. And I personally like this boxy design. I love the feel in the hand. It feels really comfortable. It fits really snug in the hand. It is a large phone, 6.8 inches. Um, but nonetheless, it's it's great to hold in the hand. I would definitely recommend you trying it out at your local Best Buy or your local carrier stores for those of you in the U.S. Now, the matte glass back. I absolutely love this. Why? Because it doesn't really attract too many fingerprints. Now I have the green color. Um, for those who maybe have burgundy or black, I don't know how those attract or if they're good with against fingerprints, but this one has been great. I mean, I have been using a case for the past week, so I haven't, you know, been used, you know, going like this for the past week, but um, the case has been covering that up. And I do want to talk about the camera cutoff because I did talk about the cases. I personally like it. I mean, it's not like S21 Ultra and the camera cutouts, uh, they have their own individual cutouts. I personally like it. Some may not, that's that's personally okay. That's just the preference. Uh, but there are some cases like ESR right here. It's a great case. This has been my main case, the metal kickstand case. However, the camera cutouts on some cases, they offer this kind of like P cutout. I mean, I can't unsee that P right there, but they don't protect in between the, the individual camera lenses themselves. I mean, you still can, you know, get those scratched or cracked or whatever it is potentially. I mean, Samsung's official cases, they cover them up individually, which is pretty nice, but and it's really flush. Um, so that's a that's a huge plus. But for case manufacturers, they have the option to either go with like a P or cover them up individually. But nonetheless, I don't mind the camera layout and this design with the S22 Ultra. Now let's head over to the front of this display or the phone, which is that display. And display for me, I think it's the most important part of the device because it's the part that we interact with the most. And I think many people here will agree with me. Samsung displays, they are absolutely gorgeous. I've used Samsung phones. My, I think I believe my last main Samsung phone I've used as like a daily driver for almost two years, uh, for more than two years actually, two years and like two months until I got this OnePlus 7 Pro at the time, was the Samsung Galaxy S8. That display was just amazing. I absolutely loved one. That's one of my all time favorite phones, Samsung Galaxy S8. And when I came back to this S22 Ultra, I was like, Wow, I really do miss Samsung displays. They are just absolutely gorgeous. I've really enjoyed watching YouTube videos um, for the past week, consuming content, media and content on this device. Now, my display is at full HD. I didn't decide to change it to 100 or quad HD. It's at 120 Hertz, um, but I was like, you know what? I, I like this display right now. There's no need to hit go up to Quad HD. And I also want to test out the battery life, which I'm going to talk about later. Now, another thing about this design is going to be the S Pen. And I'm going to get to the S Pen, talk about it in a little bit, but I just like how the S Pen is included in the Ultra. Uh, so I guess that's kind of a differentiating factor. Now, if you want to pick up um, the highest end, or if you want this S Pen, then you got to go with the Ultra the S22 Ultra, the original, the normal S22 and S22 Plus, they don't have that. But nonetheless, I've absolutely loved this boxier design. Uh, fits super snug in the hand. I just, I don't know how to, I feel comfortable using this phone. I feel like, I don't know how to explain it, but it's just a really comfortable feeling to use this device. All right, so I wanna share my software kind of experiences and my performance experiences. Uh, for the past week, I've I've really enjoyed using One UI. Samsung has really cleaned up their software skin uh, over the past couple of years. I remember TouchWiz was just terrible. 
um, and they changed it up uh, with the Galaxy S8 and the S9, and then with uh, S10, they released One UI, which was a real, you know, good, huge step forward and a good step forward in my opinion. It's been super sleek and responsive in the past week. And 120 hertz, you can see how much smoother it makes the performance on this. I've had no lag, no stutters in the past week of using uh, the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra. Now, bear in mind, my model does have 12 gigabytes of RAM, and I was able to get this for the same price of the base model for the eight gigs because of pre-order. So when I pre-ordered this device, I got the 12 gigs um, of RAM and 256 gigs of storage for $1,199 for the same price as the base model. They're just running that promotion if you pre-order it. Um, and I'm gonna talk about pricing in a little bit as well, but um, just for the duration of this video, remember that my model has 12 gigs of RAM. Maybe those who have eight gigs, um, they might, you know, once after they start using their phone, a you know, couple months down the line, they might start seeing some uh, lag and whatever it is. I don't know. I can't speak on behalf of that. But for 12 gigs, I think 12 gigs is you know it's more than enough. I even think 8 gigs is fine. Um, but when you're paying the premium price, you're just like, I, I kind of want to compete with my competitors. So they're offering you know this specs or whatever. So kind of seeing 8 gigs as a base model. Um, and comparing it to you know previous models is just like how come they went with that choice But that's all for a different topic in a different video I just want to put out there my model has 12 gigs of RAM. Anyway moving on next is S Pen and this is why I want to talk about it. The reason why is I thought I wouldn't be using S Pen. I mean, I've never used a Note before and with S22 Ultra and you know the inclusion of S Pen I thought I wouldn't be using it but guys like let me just put it out there um, I have, you know, it's been surprisingly really useful for me. Uh, I've been taking notes and using it just for, you know, normal scrolling, just playing like this. This is how I use my phone now. I just use it as like uh, for normal scrolling. Obviously I do take notes. And the great thing is um, I was actually really surprised on how much I do need to like uh, take a quick note. Like uh, someone's giving me a phone number. I just need to write it down or an address. I just go like this and I just, I just write down the address i mean my my writing is terrible and I, I am i am a lefty but here is just an example here's just an example i mean yeah i'm a little bit more um, neat when it's you know on the table but just in hand like i just write quick notes like that yes i have sloppy handwriting i'm sorry um i can't write with my right hand i'm a lefty guys um but it's just like, I didn't realize how much, uh, how often I would need to take notes because with my past phones, I would have to, you know, open up my phone, go into the notes and just pulling this out just has made it really easier. Um, and also I do want to add with putting the S Pen aside is this fingerprint sensor. I'm coming from the Pixel 6 Pro and we all know how, you know, 6 Pro or Pixel 6 and 6 Pro's fingerprint sensor was. Definitely not the greatest, but this ultrasonic fingerprint sensor has been absolutely amazing. Just just one touch, that's it. It's been awesome. Um, I, I don't know if I can go back to Pixel 6 Pro because of that fingerprint sensor. I, I need to use some sort of uh, authentication and um, I don't wanna keep putting in my password, but I also wanna rely on something like um, a face ID or a fingerprint sensor and Pixel 6 Pro's fingerprint sensor is not that great. So, you know, good job, Samsung. Your fingerprint sensor is awesome. So that's a plus for me. Now, another thing I want to talk about is the cameras and Samsung has definitely put in a lot of improvements in the cameras. But if you want to be honest, I am definitely going to, you know, dive more into the camera and use it and try it out. But in my use of the cameras um, in the past week, like I have still just been um, downloading the apps and trying to port over things and enter, um, you know, my usernames and my um, accounts for all of my applications and this and that. So I just have not been able to kind of play with the camera as much as I have wanted to. And plus, um, I kind of have been scrunched with school going with, you know, three papers going on in the next couple of weeks, getting those, um, you know, getting those started and proceeding with those. And I got other homework going on. So it's just been like a hassle and I'm um, trying to be proactive and make use of, you know, which kind of prioritize, let's put it that way. But for cameras, I did, you know, open it up and try it out. And I will be putting up some sample photos on screen. But they're definitely a huge improvement. I think they're, and I'll be, you know, making comparisons between Pixel 6 Pro and like iPhone 13 Pro Max in the future. But I 
think cameras is it's is really reliable but what really did kind of surprise me and i wanted to try this out was the zoom was the zoom on the s22 ultra with this 100x zoom obviously it'll get super super far but even 30x zoom and i'll be putting up some sample photos right now as well 30x zoom is like you can use this photo you can like you can pick out what it's showing on screen i don't know about you but i think because of this video i'm going to be using zoom much more than i previously would because like when i zoom in it's not going to be as it's not going to be as precise. I'm not going to be able to, you know, point out what it's saying or what it's showing on screen, but now it's become a much more usable and I think I'm going to be using it. But nonetheless, I'm definitely going to be trying out cameras and from my limited use in this one week, I've really come to enjoy the camera. But I just wanna also put a disclaimer out there. Like I am not really a phone camera person in general. Like I'm not taking too many photos often. Like I'm not, outside taking a bunch of photos or inside taking a bunch of photos anyway it's just like a part of the phone that i'm not you know too attached to so obviously i want a great uh camera uh and good quality but it's just something like i'm not it's not number one on the list it's not my priority to have for a for a device okay so there's a lot of people who want to know about battery life and by the way this really doesn't rock too much it just rocks on one end but a lot of people want to know about the battery life and how the battery performs on the S22 Ultra. And for me, after one week, it's been great. I mean, I'm not, I can't give a full closure on how it really does perform on my daily needs because like I said, I've been setting up for the past couple of days and I've been forced to kind of use it a little bit more than I would in a normal you know, day in the life. Um, but I can say this, I'm coming from Pixel 6 Pro and this lasts much longer than Pixel 6 Pro. It's at a point, I can also say this, it's at a point where I don't need to worry about charging the S22 Ultra during the day, but for Pixel 6 Pro, it was like, I need to charge this, you know, by the mid afternoon, which was a bummer. So let's, you know, I just put it out there. Um, so it definitely performs much better than Pixel 6 Pro. Now, hopefully I can share with you all my review and, you know, my experience on the battery life in my one month later review. And hopefully in the future, uh, maybe my six month and one year, obviously those are videos for, you know, the future long-term reviews. But all I can say right now is everyone uses their phone differently and we may get different results. Some may get really good battery life on S22 Ultra. Some may get really, you know, poor battery life on the S22 Ultra. And I think it was the same with Pixel 6. Some got really good, you know, battery life on Pixel 6 Pro and some have gotten really terrible battery life. And I've just not been getting, you know, the battery life that I need for my use in a day with Pixel 6 Pro. That might be the case with S22 Ultra for others too. So just do keep that in mind. Um, I, I think it changes from person to person how they use their device. Now, I want to talk about the price on the S22 Ultra and just what I kind of noticed and I want to share with you guys is price is the same from the S21 Ultra, which is $1,199. And that's a plus. However, you know, those who pre-ordered this device, they got 12 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage for $1,199 for the, um, that base price. And that I think should have been the base in my opinion. The S21 Ultra last year was 12 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage, but this year the S22 Ultra is eight gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage. I mean, storage, okay. I think this is, we're at a point where it's, you know, care or companies should start to consider 256 as their storage because I'm noticing that, you know, my iPhone, for example, 128 gigs of storage and my Pixel, they're running out of storage much quicker than I had previously anticipated. So I'm thinking, you know, 256 in the next year or two should be the base. But I wanna know why Samsung kind of brought their base model of the S22 Ultra down to eight gigs of RAM rather than 12. Now, don't get me wrong. Like I said, there's nothing wrong with eight gigs of RAM. I think that's perfectly fine. But when you're considering its competitors like Pixel 6 Pro and OnePlus 10 Pro and all of those other pros and ultras of the Android world, then you're kind of like, why does my phone have eight gigs of RAM? 
the competitors, I, you know, it's comp it's competing with its other devices, right? Why is it offering less RAM? Um, that's, you know, one thing to just, you know, ask about. I don't know the exact reason why they dropped it down to eight gigs of RAM as their base model. Um, but nonetheless, if you do go out and buy one right now, the base model is 1199, eight gigs of RAM and 120 gigs of storage. So for those of you who did pre-order and got 256 gigs of storage and 12 gigs of RAM, awesome. Uh, but that's just, you know, I just wanted to share my thoughts about price. And I think it's great that Samsung left the price as the same as its predecessor. And that about wraps up this video and just my thoughts and experiences one week later on the S22 Ultra. Definitely, I'm going to be working on a one month later review on this device. Uh, if you have any questions and thoughts and what you want to know about the S22 Ultra, let me know in the comments down below and hopefully I'll get to those into my review. But if you did enjoy, definitely be sure to super mad that like button, comment down below, and best of all, share this video because it really does help out the channel a lot and will help push my content out to more people. Anyway, that's been it for me and I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Anyway, everybody, I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, be sure to superman that like button, comment down below, because with the more interactions we get on this video, not only helps the video and the channel, but also pushes the video out to more viewers. And best of all, superman that subscribe button. Until next time, everybody, and until next video, this is MTG.